Okay, and we're live over here on the stream editor. Dope. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess let's get right into it. Um, I don't know, just maybe adjust the camera slightly. Just, just ever so slightly. <clears throat> All right, guys. So, what we're gonna be doing today is our, there's my notification. What we're gonna be doing today is doing part two of our Liberty Sirius XM, Sirius XM model. Um, we will be doing the serious side of the income statement balance sheet and cash flow today. Sorry. Um, and possibly doing some of the panels. If not, the panels will be in part three. Um, to go over kind of what we did last time. Uh, but before I go and say what we went over last time, let's go and talk about... Um, the YouTube page is finally up. I know you guys have been watching the last parts, um, last episodes, uh, pretty pretty frequently. Actually, it's pretty uh, pretty awesome. You guys have been um, really watching uh, the last video a lot. So go and check out that. Uh, the YouTube link is in the bio down below, and all these recordings, everything that we do live here on Twitch, will also be over on the YouTube page. So, um, Dial, what's good? How we doing? Um, so all that stuff will be over on the YouTube page, so go and watch that if you haven't seen this episode already to go and catch up. Um, make sure to follow me on Twitter down below. Um, stream every Monday and Wednesday doing the financial modeling. Every Friday, Saturday doing the zombie streams, the Q&As. Um, probably not this weekend because if I recall correctly, this Friday, I mean this Saturday is the 4th, so probably not going to be streaming then, but um, you know. Um, yeah, so what we did last time on the model was we did all of our sub, um, we, don't, we uh, went and um, did all of our subs, uh, all of our sub estimations. So we modeled out what our sub growth was going to be for both Sirius XM and down in Pandora as well. So with that, we uh, were able to go and do our ARPUs. We calculated our ARPUs. How we went and did revenue was a little bit different from Match.com. We went and did um, just kind of a kind of growth adjustment, um, kind of a growth rate type of approach versus doing the ARPU models like we did with Match. Um, and we have these little tabs over here for each of our little parts that are serious in Pandora. So we can open them up and we can go and see what our different um, assumptions are for our increase, our base and our decrease um, and uh, with that being said um, we also went and had um, we also have this little tab over here that references our front page um, where we can go and change our scenario and we'll go and change our revenue growth based on the scenarios that we have on our revenue uh, tab on our uh, revenue build tab next thing that we did was we actually went and we did our chart data and our charts. Well, we didn't do our charts yet, but um, we did our chart data so that when we go and fill all this in, it will go and uh, it will go and make our charts. So with that being said, we should just go and dive straight into building out the model. Um, the most intimidating thing that I've seen about this model yet is the working capital is just massive. I've already given the liberty of doing um, some of these assumptions here, some uh, which I normally do, which is just use whatever the last year's is and carry it forward. Um, normally, I don't mess with this unless I have some type of reason to, like a um, like if I was doing a retail company, right? And um, and I had a real big thesis about them changing their inventory days out center or something like that, or um, one of these other types of things. Um, I would change that out 
and there should be a percent. I would change that out and um, adjust accordingly. Uh, and feel free to do that. If you guys have strong opinions on your working capital, go ahead and do that. Um, I typically don't, like I said, unless it's like a retail company or something where um, something wacky. Um, haven't finished doing the EBIT and some of these other panels, but we can get there as we do it. Um, I did go and put in, I have been putting in the uh, Liberty Media, I've done a couple years now of their full financials and a couple quarters. Um, Liberty companies are really hard to go and follow because they have such interesting financial statements and stuff like that. Um, but what I have been doing is tracking on the quarterly for Sirius how much uh, Liberty stock, uh, how much Liberty Media owns in terms of both shares and in terms of quantity. So that when we go over here, we can also do that on the fiscal year end, just so when we're buying back stock, we can also go and say, okay, you know, is Liberty gonna be doing it? Who's gonna be doing it? Um, so yeah, I'm also just toying with the volume over here a lot. Hopefully we can get this all done in this video. Um, I wanna go and say we should be able to, if I make it a little bit longer. I didn't start exactly at seven, but um, that happens. Um, I'll f I always gotta stop myself from doing the little things. Um, yeah, so all we did was, um, and this is from, from last episode, uh, from last uh, video two we went and we just had little growth rates here. So that we can go and see what each section's growing at. Um, but I hit all those. And what we did was we just went and took, you know, subscription revenue. So that's both SiriusXM and Pandora sub revenue. It's both their advertising revenue and uh, pretty much Sirius's uh, equipment revenue and the other revenue is pretty much just SiriusXM. So we just took those all from the last page and put them here. Um, our cogs, I did, I did go and already do this um, because after reading the uh, 10K before I started the first video, I, I already had assumptions in mind. Um, so revenue share of royalties gonna go up because as they go and acquire more content, um, or try and keep the content that they have on board, they need to go and increase those royalties and um, some of those rev, those rev sharing programs. Content, uh, programming content cost in terms of producing it, kind of stay relatively flat. Customer service and billing, because of the Pandora acquisition, I think this is one of the big parts where they have a lot of um, operating uh, margin here. Well, not operating margin, but uh, margin expansion opportunities because they're all using one uh, kind of payment service and billing system. They can go and bring that down. You saw a noticeable increase from when they took over. Uh, well, they've been decreasing throughout the years, but especially when they took over Pandora, you saw a pretty big decrease. Um, satellite transmission, I kept it flat because this is when um, they uh, when they launch new satellites, when they have to go and um, edit some of that back end stuff. I felt like uh, just keep that constant. That's not a huge uh, deal. But already with just that slight, a um, little bit different mix than the year before, we're roughly the same gross margins. No one would go and say I'm, you know, being too hefty here on the gross margins there. Um, in fact, I just have gross margins staying pretty much flat. Just want to double check all of these guys. Yeah, uh, because um, I'm decreasing, I'm increasing uh, revenue at about the same pace that I'm decreasing COGS. So that would make sense. Why well, gross margins are pretty much staying flat. All right. Now moving on to these kind of line items. Hmm. 
gen and admin, I think is kind of pretty much stay the same. Appreciation. That's one that we're going to link down to one of our panels, so we'll just skip that. Acquisition related cost. I don't think there's going to be much more, so we're just not even going to do that one. We'll just zero it out. Um. Engineering and development. It has been growing. But I kind of want to give him the benefit of the doubt here. And trim that down maybe by a basis point. Well, a tenth of a basis point every single year. Just maybe because they get back to where they were previously. Pandora helps out a little bit. Subscriber acquisition cost. Did we model that out on subs? I can't remember if we did or not. Yeah, I stopped doing that. Um, sack per install, especially. Yeah. Um, Stayed relatively flat, and then just jumped here. I want to go and say that some of that's probably due to Sirius XM absorbing. I mean, uh, Pandora because of absorbing a lot of their costs. So I feel like probably bring that down by half a basis point. Maybe gets us to about. Ish where they can't where they start from. Maybe we go and give them get into about right where we came from there at the tail end. Now sack. This is one where I kind of have uh, subscriber acquisition costs. This is one where I can have. I mean, I can't see it. This is one where I may just go and give him like a little bump. Oops. Every time, just because it, it's gonna be tough going against Spotify, but with SiriusXM, you do have some of the best, some of the best, um, some of the lowest churn rates out there. I mean, Spotify is twice as high as um, SiriusXM. So I want to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, but not like super, super high. Um, and I may change that depending on, um, depending in the future if uh, they do get a little bit worse or better. Um, oh, because DNA isn't there yet, so of course they're gonna have uh, higher gross margin, uh, higher EBIT margins. Um, 
recall correctly, DNA is going to be down in one of our panels. There's depreciation. There's amortization. 468. Just double check. Yep. So, we're not going to go and do those right now. But what I'll go and do is set up the formula. I will set up the formula so that we can just have it linked up. Boom. All right. Interest expense is going to be another one of these things where um, It was the wrong formula that I had in my old formula. Um, I just kept SAC, kind of the same, the average, SBC. Um, interest expense, we're going to do the same thing that they did with depreciation. Where in that... Um, where in that it's just linked down to our interest expense down here. And I'll probably go and do D and A and debt here in a second. Um, loss on extension of debt and credit facilities net. That's a good one for me trying to figure out how to go and do that. I don't know if it should be total losses, total extinguishment of debt. One of those where I am um, kind of new to having to figure that one out. So this comes from the, because uh, I would link down. I'm just trying to figure this out, and you guys have probably seen the hamster wheel turning right now. It's a little bit different when you gotta do this live. figure out a way to go and do it versus just not modeling it out saying as like it hasn't been like it's been back and forth so maybe I will just leave a thing here and figure out how to do it later along with um, in the cash flow statement as well so I could try and do that all right now or I could go and continue on. Others uh, net. 
Uh, stupid F1 key. Um, this one where if I went and did the average, if I did the average percent, it would kind of probably come up positive. If it did as a percent of gross, as a percent of EBIT, it comes as positive, and it increase our EBTs pretty substantially. I'm just gonna use previous tax code because that is pretty much the standard tax rate. I think the standard tax rate is um, 22 percent, but. could be substantially higher right now because like I said we don't have <laughs> oh my god Ryan thanks for the snap right there appreciate it Ryan why don't you just leave a comment uh, leave, leave a comment in the chat Give the channel a follow. Support the stream. Foreign currency transactions. This is another one where I either do the average or I leave blank. Yeah, I haven't done anything yet for shares. Outstanding because that's typically uses of cash when I come down to the end. Um, this all the way over. So we're going to be looking pretty rich compared to normally just because of mainly the the, um, the interest expenses is going to be the big factor there. Balance sheet, all these items typically come from us doing our WAC, I mean our working capital, except cash and cash equivalents. Is that comes from the bottom down here? Oh. Did I have that wrong? stuff for our working capital. It's receivables. Inventory. The party costs. Prepay I think is Thanks, Ryan. We appreciate the follow. Hopefully you enjoyed that sound effect as well. Property and equipment nets. That should come down from pp and &E. Do all of our links formatting. Intangibles. Actually, no, let's just finish out the working capital instead of doing that real quick. Accounts payable. 
that way we can do all of our current assets, current liabilities. Uh, although, oh, I forgot. They have these weird, <clears throat> they have these weird little situations down here where it's prepaid and other expenses and all that stuff. Uh, the other long-term assets and operating uh, lease assets are um, are in their working capital. So, um, Ryan, I want to go and ask you, why did you not go and, uh, for some reason you're not showing up on the viewer account. I don't know why. because right now it's based on interest expense and we haven't done that yet. Deferred current portion. right there. Because it is not referencing revenue, it's referencing gross profit. outstanding formula that's why I was like why am I still getting a low number it's because it's doing the days outstanding formula yeah that looks better I was like how am I doing 8 billion in revenue and only getting that much 4% of deferred revenue makes no sense and of course it will make no sense when you have the formula wrong Current portion of maturities is on there because operating lease liabilities. Liabilities. Maybe we just did that. And 
other long-term liabilities. Just refresh the page and over on my right monitor. And I was like, oh, please don't do what I think you're about to do. Cool. So we got all of our working capital done, which takes care of pretty of our current assets and our current liabilities, just besides current portions of uh, long term debt, which we will link. down. Um, no, we won't link it because there's a formula I'm going to do. Let's not do the 13% one because that's going to be ridiculous. Take that number, use the average of all previous years, bring it forward. End up gonna be airing this out. Assets. Wait a second. Okay, for a second. I was thinking of um, Liberty Series XM, where they have a different way of doing their um, intangible assets. We'll link that down there because that will change based on our amortization expense that we so deserve to go and do. party long-term assets and long-term deferred tax assets what I'm probably gonna go and do for these two along with some of these other guys down here that I um, don't like the deferred tax liabilities for that one year in the operating lease liabilities though I thought yeah on one, on one of them they, they do long term on this one they do short term So I think I'm gonna go make it another panel for our debt, for those kind of mixed balance sheet items that we can go and try and model out. We could hold them the same, um, but for stuff like tax assets, long-term deferred tax assets, it's pretty easy to do as, as a percent of um, past like taxes paid. And then carry that forward. Um, it's the operating lease liabilities and the operating lease revenues. I, oh wait, I already did that. Um, it's this one I'm kind of concerned about, but I may just kind of do it, the same thing that we did down here, which is do a percentage of gross profit and just leave it up there because it'll pretty much be the same thing as this, the same growth rate. Um, Deferred rev, I guess we'll do the same thing there. You guys saw what we did for short term debt, so we're gonna do the same thing for long term debt. Go down to the debt. Time. Just do, actually, no. Do that. Minus. Oh, I was. 
the smart. I remember what I did now. I remember what I did now. I included these as a part of our debt obligations. So I guess I'll just hold that constant. And then I'll just get paid down along with debt eventually. Although I'm thinking about that may not be the best thing to go and do. Yes, yeah, as I'm growing those mines will grow the lease as well. Because any debt pay down that I do will also pay down the lease. decisions that sometimes you just do. as a percentage of average debt because if we do pay down any debt we at least get the benefit of that via the average debt and not the beginning um because the beginning well the beginning will force it straight through versus average um i'll be a little bit smoother and that did populate awesome See, we're still a little bit higher. Still a little bit higher. But we, again, we still don't have our depreciation in. So. Debt panel is done, other than when we want to come back after we finish cash flow and all balance sheets balance sheets, we want to go and take down our debt, pay down some debt. Um, amortization still needs to happen. little things I do and going, huh? Why did I do that like that? Um, so yeah, we still got some balance sheet holes we gotta go through. We always keep this just in case. Are they doing that as... Just remember where 
SBC is on my line item. There it is. Oh wait, no, no, I gotta remember how to do. Treasury stock will get interesting. And these two I'll leave blank for now. This is when I got out, like, there's only like once where I have it pretty flawless for. That's Liberty Media Formula One. Because it'll be the same for both. statement anyways. forget I always forget the common stock part for some reason let's go throw the balance sheet all off whack for now but that's fine stuff we didn't calculate before will include related long-term assets long-term deferred tax assets
Third rev. Where are the last two? 123, 124. Then we're gonna be all good. Okay, now we're chilling. Um, this is percent taxes paid for revenue as percent of rev. Uh, same defense. How do related long-term party assets? We did the old days outstanding. J. 
plugging in for a balance sheet. time some of my formatting had like cents on the dollar on and it's just eating me alive to see it but I'm also too lazy to change it all balanced on the first go. I mean, even without PP&E there, or any amortization, without doing any type of like plugs or anything like that, for additional pain and capital or anything like that, where the delta here is not that bad. We've yet to do the cash flow statement, and that will, of course, ripple through everything. But before we do that, <sighs> let's go and do our PPE. And while we're at it, might as well do depreciation and amortization since. What is next? This is gonna be the cash flow statement. And we are lavish pan. Hello, stonks man. The most lavish of pans. Thank you for joining. Thanks for coming along, buddy. How are you tonight, my dude? not doing that bad on time so Oh, 
Ooh, I almost saved. And then I remembered this is the beginning part on it, so I can't do that. Alright, but what were we doing? We were doing... Our depreciation, amortization, and all that stuff like that. Stays pretty decently constant other than I think like two gears you're in the mid mid fours and fives. Uh, this is another one where I kinda of have to turn to the old model. Try to remember the formula that I use. side that way. In case something like that happens again, I can fix it. That's basic percent sales, so equals times are we J6 for our revenue. Kaboom. We have our magical capex. And depreciation is a percent of prior years pp &E. Um, it's growing decently every year. We'll go and do the old. We grow it a little bit every year. reading if that formula is not even there and since we're doing that as zeroed out might as well get rid of that double check we're getting there That seems high. But I will include it within the average. Because I don't think, yeah, we're not going to run down intangibles. I mean, I guess I could, but it'd be huge if I did you're talking that'd be a lot more I have to bump it up pretty significantly I could I mean we are a little bit uh, more in line with past years than last years so I'll take it I mean the margin expansion isn't even on the net income isn't even that huge. We have about 20, one and a half. The highest they've done is 20. So maybe we do. 
do we do up? Bump, bump those numbers up. Chad, do we think that's fair? <laughs> All right, but other than that, all of our panels are done except for a share account, except for doing debt, which I always leave to last because it ends up being a cash flow thing. Do we have enough cash to go and pay down some debt? And at the moment, we don't know that yet. We don't know what our free cash flow is like. So. Wow. I am still just really surprised at how well the balance sheet is balancing right now without, like I said, doing an additional paid in cap or um, accumulating another comprehensive loss net, net of tax. Um, I still don't know about this yet. But yeah, pretty close. And doing the cash flow statement should help with that a little bit too. Versions for doubtful accounts. Oh, cash interest expense net of amortization net of amortization of premium isn't that greatly affect our balance sheet now that I think about it. Yeah. Instead of being off by 9,000, we're off by uh, 9,000 at the end because our assets were tuned down quite a bit. She is so much worse out of whack. Um, we'll leave that a blank for right now. Provision for doubtful accounts. Oh man, I haven't done that since like freshman year accounting. This is exactly why I wanted to start doing these videos because in school for some of these things they don't teach you how to go model it out. 
this one I definitely will actually probably just continue on from previous years because they have equity investments in um, one Sirius XM Canada so it's gonna be tough to go on it's like some of these things are tough to mark year to year um, I may just do that for these guys too well this I feel like I can model out provision for doubtful accounts probably do too this I'm just gonna zero out instead um, and I know that was up there Instrument. This is another one. I'm just gonna hold it from wherever the prior year was. Since I'm also not making any changes to their instrument. dividend received from unconsolidated entity. That's from Sirius Canada. I know that for a fact. I would exactly know how to do this on Liberty because they mark down every single one of their investments in terms of um, um, what's the deferred income taxes. change that much because the changing of it is actually not that big other than this one here It didn't do our, our, our working cap yet in terms of for oh, what it did. Yeah, it took the time to do it. All right. So I 
minimize cash outflows. Prepaid expense. Other long term assets. done with our assets. Well, we are done with our assets. Okay, on to our liabilities, which of course... Alright, the first one is accounts payable, right? Oh, God. I can't... This working capital is like the single largest working cap that I've seen in a company yet. It's amazing because it's... Um, Sirius XM, right? And Pandora. Not some huge. Like Spotify's wasn't even this complex. Operating lease liabilities. Oh, did I skip ahead? Yeah, I did. This should be deferred revenue. Hopefully all you guys out there are having a good night. I know I sure am. The old related parties liabilities. <laughs> I just love how little how little the change is for most of it. Term borrowing. Uh, all the long term borrowing, because it's all from different accounts. Um, dividend paid. I will go and do a thing. Let's go and just do it right down here. I'll do DPS. Then do uh, different per share.
to have stock price on there too. Historical stock prices, which is not fun. If I want to go and do dividend yield, um, which gets tough a little bit here, guys. Ooh. So I can go and just do, um, like keep the dividend, grow the dividend by like, what we do is a dividend yield we do. Dividend growth. But then I can grow the dividend yield and then um, we'll grow it by like two percent a year. Typically, dividends don't even grow that much. So, and then what this will be is wait, no, 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 no. I, I shouldn't have done that. I should do it, even though it's negatives. Outstanding, we get our dividend per share, and then no matter what I do with shares outstanding, if I buy back shares or whatever, it at least keeps going, right? And this isn't affected, and our dividends paid isn't affected, I should go and say, um, because it's going to be the same net amount, just the dividend per share is going to change. The dividend per share is going to change because if we go and buy back shares. Well, of course, it'll be a higher dividend per share because there's less shares outstanding. Um, common stock purchase and retired. went down because of dividends by a lot. Um, well, thanks, Dana. Well, thanks for watching, Dana. You should go and, uh, a nice uh, follow there on the channel. Drop a chat in. Um, yeah, an accumulated deficit went down big time because of the DPS.
Oh, it still gives us a, a half decent. Um, still gives us a half decent um, reconcile, actually. It's moved up a bit, but not a ton. Oh dear. Um, proceeds from long term. So all of these guys. All of these guys are going to be based off of how much debt we accumulate or not. So, if how much we retire. Um, So that's always tough to fully model out because I haven't gotten set if I'm if I'm uh, paying down debt yet. I don't want to do a, a max min function quite yet. Addition. Oh, PP and A. That cap X. We already did that. Purchase are restricted in other investments. Maybe that's from our acquisitions. That's gonna be a big fat zero unless they buy our heart radio. Um, oh, if this is actually just Liberty Media. Um, I'll continue that going on. Still producing a ton of cash. It's also because we haven't paid down any debt yet. Um, um, of short-term investments. Yeah. Free cash flow is like virtually the same. That's what's killing me, even though we're making a ton more. Well, of course this could be the same because operating cash hasn't changed. Um, it's all that repayment of debt. That's the real kicker. Um, hmm. Let's check on the balance sheet. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, not that small. In fact, I bet you. Oh, we're almost there, guys. 612 Montclair. Oh boy. You guys made a joint Twitch. That's fantastic. Well, 612 Montclair, how are we doing out there? How are you enjoying the stream? Um, so, you guys are doing great, that's fantastic. Forget to, for these videos to put my font settings to black because it doesn't show up on Excel um, in the background. Um, this is, of course, financial modeling. We're doing our Sirius XM and Libri Sirius XM. Um, you know what you guys could do if you ever want to see any any more of my uh, any of my streams I do in the future. You could follow the channel, and you can always watch past videos on the channel or on the YouTube channel. 
You can also donate to the stream. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for the follow. I have fun little sound effects for that too. Um, here we go back into some of my spots that I didn't do. So we're not paying down any debt, we're not issuing any debt. At the moment we're keeping it. Rather conservative here. Uh, we could change that real fast, though. Finance and gaming, yeah. could do something ridiculously stupid and have them like it just do a constant maturity cycle of paying down debt and issuing new debt um, how much stock have they been buying back previously On average, eight percent of float. That's decent. Um, oh, I haven't updated the price yet. We'll do that using Adam Financial, of course. My goal is to get Adam Financial to sponsor the channel. That'd be dope. So, okay. I do whenever I do sheer buybacks I always try and use the current share price so there's no way other than if you built in um, other than if you built in some more stuff uh, I will not show you the desktop Kate and Montclair gang uh, oh we still need to balance the balance sheet that's what we need to do uh, We're gonna keep this constant. And what we'll go and do is we'll use additional paid in cap as the plug. Uh, man. Had a non circular reference. 
Um, it's going to be total libs minus total assets. Reconcile. And I have my plug, although it pains me that I had to use a plug. But it's still not moving right. Why aren't we moving correctly here, boys? Thing is, I know like somewhere in the in the cash flow statement, there's some type of calculation that I'm missing. Some type of calculation that's caused me to be this off. Oh, almost an hour and a half. Um, hmm. I think. I think instead, I think I'm gonna end the stream here because we're about an hour and a half where I like to go and end the streams. And um, I'll have the fixes of um, Bye612. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following. Um, Okay, so what we'll do on the next stream, guys, is I'll go finish balancing the balance sheet and have some of those accounting things um, that we were talking about earlier. Um, I'll see if I can't remedy those. Um, actually, why don't we just go and add that in? Whoa. I'll see if I can't remedy those um, and see if we can't not use additional paid and cap plug. Um, and we'll, and I'll come back and maybe we'll go and decide whether we want to go and do pay down debt, um, a little bit at a time with some constant kind of refreshing maturity cycles. But, um, in the next stream also, we'll finish all that up. We will also go and do, I'll have all the charts ready to go and we'll also go and finish doing our valuation work, all of our valuation methodologies, um, for, um, for series six M, and then we should um, then um, in the next one, and the one after that, we'll do Liberty series six M. Um, if you guys watched the video all the way through, thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure to follow the channel, follow the YouTube page, um, follow me on Twitter, and I stream again once again on Monday and Wednesdays. I do this finance modeling, Fridays and Saturdays I do some um, Q and A sessions on Call of Duty Nazi Zombies. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have a good. Uh, Good rest of your week and you know, thanks again for watching.